One of the biggest issues with using AI is hallucinations, when it confidently makes things up or states false information as fact. These are still very prevalent in all the newer models. It doesn't matter if you're using ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, or Grok, they all hallucinate regularly. But there are proven ways to reduce them. Lots of papers have been written on this topic, although I'll mainly reference research from the past year. I will link to everything I cite in the description, but don't worry, I'm not like reading from papers in this video. I'm showing the most proven techniques and how they can actually be applied in useful scenarios for a typical user. My favorite example of a hallucination that went viral was you would ask an LLM if there's a seahorse emoji and it just went completely unhinged. Now they have patched this in newer models, but if you want to test it, you can even go in ChatGPT to legacy models and use the previous version of 5.1 and it still happens. And I tested this in all the models. It happened in every single one of them not that long ago. And that's just a pretty funny but extreme example. Where hallucinations become a much bigger issue is when they're mixed into partial truths and intelligent sounding answers. And that's where it happens a lot and it's often difficult to catch because it sounds so convincing. Starting with the undisputed champion for knowledge-based answers, RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. This is where you ground the answer in retrieved text from external sources that's not in the model's training data. Basically, you're giving it a cheat sheet. And this highlights a surprisingly common misconception about how AI works. There was a survey done recently that asked a lot of AI-related questions. One of those was when you ask AI like ChatGPT a question, what is it actually doing? 45% of people said looking up the exact exact answer in a database. Another 21% thought it's following a script of pre-written responses. Like only 28% got it right. Now that number will change depending on who you survey. I assume that if I surveyed the people who watch this channel, it would be much higher. But either way, when you understand that these models are actually guessing the most likely next words based on patterns they've learned, that is oversimplified, but accurate enough, it makes it clear why hallucinations are such a hard problem to solve and why RAG is so effective. It essentially lets the model actually look up answers instead of guessing from memory. For a full RAG system, the most accessible tool right now is Notebook LM. It does this by default, it's free, super easy to use, and it's just my favorite AI tool for any kind of knowledge work. I'll cover all the techniques if you're just using something like ChatGPT or Gemini in a second, but this is such an effective tool when used right, I want to start with it. You can upload tons of sources, PDFs, YouTube videos, websites, or you can use the Discover Sources feature. It goes out and finds high quality sources for you, then lets you add them directly to your notebook in a few seconds. You can upload up to 50 sources per notebook on the free plan, and you can have up to 100 notebooks. Once your sources are loaded, anytime you ask a question, Notebook LM forces citations. It answers using only that information and adds inline citations so you can verify exactly where the data came from. That drastically reduces hallucinations, but it doesn't magically fix poor or biased sources. So the step I add is one or more of these verification prompts. So prompt one is to check for contradictions. Looking only at the sources in this notebook, identify any areas where the sources disagree with each other and any clear contradictions or conflicting claims. This catches bias and hidden disagreements in your source selection. If multiple credible sources contradict each other, that's a signal that the topic is more nuanced. And you need to understand why they disagree before drawing conclusions. A second prompt identifies gaps. Based on these sources, what important questions or subtopics about the topic are missing or barely covered. List the biggest gaps that would need to be filled to really understand this topic well. Do not invent details, just describe what is missing. So you don't know what you don't know. This prompt forces the AI to analyze the extent of your knowledge and highlight blind spots. The third prompt is to find missing perspectives. Are there any contrarian, alternative, or lesser known viewpoints on this topic that are likely not represented in these sources? Describe those possible viewpoints at a high level and suggest what kinds of sources I would need to look for to find them. This can help break you out of echo chambers. Mainstream sources might make the same assumptions, miss important perspectives, or completely omit dissenting views. Before diving into any research project, I typically run at least the first prompt to check for contradictions, then use the others depending on the topic. And they just take a couple minutes and can save you from building on incomplete or biased information. I will be including a lot of specific prompts throughout this. I'll have a link down in the description that includes every single prompt I cover and makes it much easier to just copy and paste these. Now there's tons of other stuff you can do in Notebook LM, like create infographics, 
podcasts, mind maps, quizzes, and all sorts of stuff. I've done multiple full videos on it. That's not the point of this one, so I won't go deeper here. But if Notebook LM is a new tool to you, go check out one of those videos after this one. Now, I've focused this entire video on reducing hallucinations, just getting factually accurate, verifiable answers. But there's a whole other side to working with AI effectively, actually getting it to reason well and accomplish complex tasks. That's where this free resource from HubSpot comes in. It's a seven-day playbook called Advanced ChatGPT Prompt Engineering, and it fills in all the gaps I haven't covered here. It's structured as a seven-day progression through increasingly advanced techniques. Each day includes prompt templates, example scenarios, and hands-on exercises. My favorite section is modular systems development. You learn to break prompts into reusable building blocks that you can combine for different situations. So instead of writing everything from scratch, you build a library of components that work together. So if reducing hallucinations is step one, this playbook is step two, getting AI to actually perform at the level you need it to. You can download it for free using the link in the description. And thank you to HubSpot for sponsoring this video and providing resources like this one. You're not going to use Notebook LM for every question all the time. If you're just going back and forth in something like ChatGPT or Gemini, the simplest quick improvement is to make sure it uses search. They often do this automatically, but both have the option to turn it on to be sure, or you can add it into the prompt. Alternatively, you can find your own sources and upload them as files or give specific URLs. Whenever possible, give the models a real context to work from. Then there are a couple prompting tricks you can layer on top of that. First is tell it to only work from the given information and not make stuff up. Add to the prompt to only use the facts it finds through search or uploaded documents. The second is give it permission to say I don't know. So by default, models try to always answer even when they shouldn't. So here's how this looks in practice. So I'd upload or paste in a source like a PDF, YouTube's transcript, documentation, or a research paper, and then force it to answer from that. Say, here is some context. Based only on this text, answer this question. Type in your question, and if the answer is not clearly in the text, say, I don't know based on this document instead of guessing. And that's the simple base structure that can be used for all sorts of things. Another tip is to ask narrower, more specific questions. Broad, vague questions invite the model to fill in the gaps. Smaller questions with a clear job dramatically reduce guessing. So instead of explain this product to me, use what are the top three complaints mentioned in these customer reviews, or compare the pricing tiers based only on the information on this pricing page. Another one I really like is ask for confidence levels on each claim. So this is really helpful because it forces the model to self-assess. So just add this to the end of a prompt. If you are unsure or the information is missing, say, I don't know, instead of guessing. And for each main claim, add a confidence label in parentheses, high, medium, or low. At the end, list anything you're unsure about or could not find. And this works because it forces the model to evaluate its own certainty before presenting information as fact. And when you see a low or medium confidence tag, you know to double check that claim instead of discovering it was wrong later. And that one instruction, if you're not sure, say you don't know, cuts a surprising amount of fake confidence. Now there is some research into fine tuning models to do some of these things on their own, but I'm sticking to techniques that are applicable to the average person. Although it is interesting how effective fine tuning models specifically to prefer saying I don't know or to stick to source text over making things up is. Um, I feel like that applies to humans too. Now here's another quick and easy one. You've probably heard that adding think step by step to your prompts helps with reasoning. And while that can help, it's often already built into modern models now. This is called chain of thought reasoning. And since it was found to be effective, many models do it automatically, especially in thinking modes but chain of thought can actually make hallucinations harder to detect. When a model reasons step by step from a wrong premise, each subsequent step builds on that mistake. The reasoning looks coherent, but it's amplifying the initial error and making it more convincing. So a more effective approach is to ask the model to verify its answer. So just adding a phrase like verify your answer or check your work for errors pushes the model into a critique phase. So instead of just reasoning forward, it looks back at the finished output and compares it against the original question. The second pass can catch logical inconsistencies the first pass might have missed. Sometimes there's a lot to verify. So there's an additional step you can add in those cases. For example, a prompt like how much water do AI data centers use and for what purpose? And how does that compare to other sectors? That involves multiple sources and fact checks. It's hard to get everything right in one go. Chain of verification can help here. 
And this is a good spot to add this note. I'm going through a bunch of different techniques that apply in different situations. Something like this is overkill for simple questions. And I'm just trying to cover the full range, but here's how it works. The first step is to just generate the initial response. And the second step is to extract any factual claims as questions. So when that answer comes back, just use this prompt. Please scan the response above and extract all specific factual claims, dates, names, statistics, events, or technical details. Convert each claim into a specific standalone question that can be fact checked. The output format, a simple numbered list of questions only. For step three, once you have that list of questions, open a brand new chat so it's not working from the context of the previous conversation, then use this prompt. So I have a list of questions that need rigorous fact checking. Instructions, do not rely on your internal training data. Use your search tool to verify the answer to each question individually. If search results are conflicting, note the conflict. Provide a citation or URL for the answer if possible. Then paste in your questions. I send that and right away you can notice a big difference. The thinking mode is planning out its web search and thinking about the best types of sources to use. Then it goes to a bunch of different sites. It discovered that 70% of water use goes to agriculture and 20% to industrial plus others. Then it figures out which sources to research further on those sectors, searches some more. Eventually it compiles everything it researched into an answer finding some errors and some claims that required more nuance. For step four, once you have those verified answers, use this prompt. Using only the verified answers you just provided above, then just paste in the original question. Please answer, how much water do AI data centers use and for what purpose? And how does that compare to other sectors? So this helps because you're separating generation from verification. The first pass just generates the content freely, then systematically fact check every claim before regenerating the final answer using only verified information. There was a good paper on chain of verification, which is one of the reasons labs tried to implement this into the models themselves. Their thinking modes use extended reasoning and some self-correction happens, but it's not systematic like this. But that is one of the reasons thinking modes give better results than the standard mode. But manual chain of verification is still much more effective. RAG and chain of verification help with fact-heavy content, but what about verifying the logic and reasoning itself? And that's particularly important because there are models that think harder and techniques like chain of thought prompting where you ask it to think step by step. These do improve reasoning, but without grounding the model in facts first, they can actually make things worse. Research from Google DeepMind in 2025, there was a bunch of different ways they tested that in this paper, but basically what it concluded, and I'm paraphrasing here, but when a model thinks through a problem step by step, it builds a convincing logical structure around a lie. The final output looks more authoritative and coherent, even if it's factually wrong. And the fix is tool augmented verification. The model needs access to a search engine or database during the verification step. That's what I've been covering and why I spent so much time on that. But once you have those facts, there are some ways to help verify the reasoning side as well. These next techniques help catch reasoning errors by having models cross check each other and compare multiple perspectives. The simplest version I call the auditor. Have a second LLM evaluate the response. This might sound strange since the issue stems from LLMs in the first place, but they're better at critique and evaluation than they are at generation. Give a model something to analyze and it's more likely to spot problems than if you asked it to create that same thing from scratch. I'll use a simple prompt on the water usage example again. What is the average water use per ChatGPT prompt? This is a topic that gets talked about a lot, but is a lot more complicated than people typically explain it and requires some reasoning beyond a simple calculation or fact lookup. It looks like Claude did cover a lot of the nuance, but I want to verify some of the reasoning here. So I'll jump into Gemini and use my auditor prompt. Then I add in the original question and the response for it to audit. Then I send that off and Gemini extracts the key claims, the key issues, and missing or overstated claims, and some suggestions. You can also run the same prompt multiple times before sending them all to the auditor. This is a technique called self-consistency. Google had a paper testing this. Instead of taking the first answer, they sampled the model multiple times, five to 40 times, and took the majority vote answer. When you run a prompt multiple times, starting a new chat each time, if it consistently gives the same answer, it's more likely to be correct. If a model is hallucinating, its answers tend to vary across attempts. I'll use the example of a more important business decision this time. I have context about a business running a $29 a month subscription product, and we're deciding whether to scale paid acquisition, pause spend and focus on retention, or raise the price slash add a higher tier. Then there's some numbers for context. Then the output format is the decision and rationale. The first answer was A. I'm not going to go through all the reasoning here. I'll just run it again. 
And this time it came back B. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I ran this three more times using the auto mode where it decides how long it should sync based on the question, and it answered B three more times in a row. Then I switched to thinking mode and it answered A five times in a row. But even when it answered the same, there was differences in the rationale. To best highlight the differences in reasoning behind these decisions, and spot any errors or assumptions that were made, I'll use this self-consistency prompt template. I ran the same prompt five times and got different responses. Help me identify the most accurate answer. And paste in your original question, then paste in each of the five responses. This could be any number, of course. Then it has your task. Then there's a format for the response. The final one being the recommended answer, the most reliable response based on consistency. In this case, it says all five responses agreed on the math, so that's good. Then the core conflict is how to interpret a 6% monthly churn rate. And there's how each response approached that, then where the claims were consistent, and where there were outlier claims or logic in the responses. Then the consensus decision to scale paid acquisition. It has the biggest uncertainties and contradictions, and the recommended answer. A typical business decision would have more context than this, with what could be a more complex decision. But even one like this highlights how valuable this process can be. There is a lot of insight in this response. Now, that idea is even more effective when done across multiple models, running the same prompt through ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, and Grok, then comparing the answers. I've been using the term from Andre Carpathy, the LLM council. Different models have different strengths and weaknesses, and they often disagree. Those disagreements are valuable information. They show you where there is uncertainty or multiple valid approaches. It's obviously more costly and time intensive to do this, but is very effective for high stakes prompts. You can use a tool like ChatHub to make it easier it will route the prompt to all the models of your choosing automatically. That is definitely faster than doing that manually. This time, ChatGPT, Gemini, and DeepSeek got A, then Claude got B. But there was a lot more variance in their reasoning. Then once you have all the answers, use a slightly modified version of that self-consistency prompt. Just keep the model names anonymous so the auditor doesn't bias towards any particular brand. I'm not going to walk through this response like I did the last one. It's the same idea. It spots a lot of variance in the reasonings, spots the contradictions, and gives a recommended answer based on all of that. And Andre Carpathy actually built a tool that automates this entire process. So he called it the LLM Council, and it's on GitHub. And basically, it just does all that for you. It sends your prompt to multiple models, has each model review the other's responses anonymously. Then it has a chairman model that reviews everything and compiles it into a final answer. You do have to know how to install this yourself. I'm not going to walk through that here, but it's a really cool tool if you want to check it out. I'll link that in the description along with everything else. Now, the final big point in all of this is combining methods. Most real-world tasks need both facts and reasoning. The best approach is to start with RAG, just ground your responses in actual sources, then apply reasoning techniques on top of those verified facts, and match the rigor to the stakes. For a simple question, just use search or upload a source. For important research, use Notebook LM with verification prompts. For complex reasoning, add self-consistency or the auditor. For anything mission critical, like a big business decision, use the full stack. RAG plus reasoning plus the LLM council. I wanted to give the complete toolbox just mix and match based on what you need. I tried to cover everything from everyday prompts to high stakes situations where getting it right really counts. And of course, none of these techniques make hallucinations go away completely, but they reduce them significantly and make them easier to spot. So again, there's links to every paper and tool I mentioned down below, as well as every prompt I covered. And if you want to go much deeper into learning all aspects of AI, we have a full course platform on Futurepedia. There's over a thousand lessons across over 30 AI courses. You'll find full learning paths on everything from ChatGPT to video generation to coding with AI and everything in between. It's all included in one subscription. You can get a seven day free trial using the link in the description. Or if you want to go deeper into Notebook LM, my favorite tool for knowledge work, I have a full guide right here.